Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is uh, Mark Gasparato, and I'm a volunteer with uh, Fair Vote Toronto. Um, we are happy to see all of you here. It's, uh, it's pretty neat to have such a large crowd. We, uh, we're really interested in getting more graphics out there and getting our message out, especially with regards to proportional representation. Um, but I realize that not everybody here tonight uh, is from Fair Vote Toronto or Fair Vote Canada. Uh, although I'm sure a substantial amount of you are, so hopefully everyone can come away from this workshop having learned something. Uh, we're going to be using uh, Canva.com tonight, so if you have not signed up for an account, I recommend uh, doing that right now. I've just typed it into the chat box. Um, it's a really free, it's free, completely free. There is a paid version, but don't worry about that for now. This is a free account. You can sign up for it. It's really easy to do, uh, and I'm going to be taking you through that. Uh, but to start it off, uh, we would like to acknowledge that this land that we've located on for thousands of years has been the traditional land of the uh, Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, Toronto is home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to them for the opportunity to work on this land. Also, in the interest of our shared values of freedom, fairness, and cooperation, we would like to declare our support for proportional representation, Abandoning the winner-takes-all mentality of our current voting system is the first and foremost uh, most important step in achieving our goals as it would allow every Canadian to make their voice heard and ensure politicians prioritize what Canadians care about. If you're new to proportional representation, definitely recommend checking out Fair Vote Canada or fairvotetoronto.ca and uh, you'll have some more information on that. All right, so to get started, let's take you through an agenda. So I'm going to introduce us to Fair Vote Canada. Uh, my name is Mark Gasparato. I'm a volunteer with Fair Vote Canada, just joined earlier this year. Also on the, cl uh, the call is Michelle Clifford, uh, the vice chair, I believe. I believe you can see her there. And uh, there's uh, quite a few other members of Fair Vote Canada and Fair Vote Toronto on the call too. Um, so uh, going forward from there, uh, we're going to be bringing you into the principles of graphic design, a tour of Canva.com. Uh, a bit of a watch and learn as I go through and then hopefully you can follow along. If you have a dual screen monitor, that's fantastic. You can make that easy. If not, you can always try it on top of the video. I can just follow along with what I'm saying. Otherwise, you can watch and then try it again after. Uh, I'll give you some time to practice. And then uh, if we have time after, we'll, uh, maybe we'll try a meme. We'll see what we can do. Uh, so a bit about Fair Vote Toronto. Uh, we're a uh, team of volunteers campaigning locally on behalf of Fair Vote Canada. Uh, our mission is to establish proportional representation as the principle on which Canadian electoral systems are based. Uh, we host volunteer hangouts every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern on Zoom, so you're more than welcome to join. And we also do monthly webinars, letter writing, workshops, and more. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to fvtoronto.ca, um, uh, and then we can go from there. Uh, I, do sh I should also mention that this is being recorded and will be publicly available after, uh, so just be aware of that. And uh, that way, if you miss anything, uh, you can always go back and check out the video. I'll make sure to email it to all of the attendees. Okay, so to get straight into graphic design, uh, the idea with graphic design is to compose visual and typographic information harmoniously in space. Don't just dump a words on the page. We want things to flow, especially if you have your key messages that you really want to deliver to your audience. You don't want them to get lost in a barrage of colors and words and icons and images. It's all about just knowing exactly what you need to say and then saying it. So effective graphic design captures the attention. It guides the viewer's eye. It effectively distributes information and it evokes emotion. I put some examples here on the screen actually from Canva. They've got a ton of templates and that's why we'll be getting into those later. Uh, and then a bit of uh, guidance from communications, what I learned in my own uh, career as a communications professional. You have to be clear, concise, and correct. So you've got to have clarity. You've got to write what you mean and mean what, it, mean what you say. So essentially write exactly what you want down on there. You don't want to burden it with jargon or any unnecessary terms. Uh, you want things to be concise, short to the point. And you also want it to be correct, factual and error free. That is a credibility issue in terms of you want people to come back to you for that information. You want to be a credible authority in the things you put out there. But also, you, you want your graphic to be effective and your message to be effective. And you don't want to be burdened by things that are just not true. All right, so some of you might already know this. Others might not, but good design is crap. And what I mean by that is contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. Contrast is the difference between two or more elements in a composition. 
The more the difference between the elements, the easier they are to compare and comprehend. Repetition simply means reusing the same or similar elements throughout your design, and alignment is all about elements lining up with each other. And proximity means ensuring related design elements are placed together. Any unrelated items should be spaced apart. Close proximity indicates that the items are connected or have a relationship to each other and become one visual unit, which helps to organize and give structure to the layout. There are other design principles, and we're not going to go into detail. This is just to give you an idea of what's out there. Uh, you've already seen alignment, repetition, and contrast, but there's also visual hierarchy. And what that really means is that uh, when you're dealing with a graphic, you've got your primary, your secondary, and your tertiary information. There could be more, but it's, this is just the easy layout to understand. The primary is really your focal point. It's what people are going to be paying attention to first. Now, that can be an image, most likely a face. The, the eyes are an invitation to connect, so that's always a popular one. It can also just be a statement, something large, bold, uh, something to grasp a reader's attention, something easy to turn on the right same page as you. Um, and then from there, if you're going more of a poster style, it'll descend because that's the easiest way to go. But then also your graphics should really point the way for them to go, um, for the, the, the viewer to really know where to put their eyes next. And it's a very natural thing and you'll get used to it when you start. Um, and you'll see it once once you see it in, in the graphics out there in the world, you actually notice that your eyes are being directed from the primary to the secondary to the tertiary. Um, we'll also go over uh, higher, the, the balance. And uh, there, there's a couple different things. You can look at symmetry and tension. And that really is just understanding your elements and then just giving them the space to really exemplify what you'd like them to exemplify. Uh, color we'll touch on, and then negative space, which is also referred to as white space. Now that is all the space around the elements in your design. Um, you really want to give them space to breathe. You don't want to overcrowd your graphic. You want them to be able to stand out and really make a, make a difference. So that, that negative space, that white space is, is very important to have. And we'll also touch on topography. Now try to keep these in mind for the next slide. These are some examples we've done here at Fairville Toronto just over our past campaigns. Uh, the first one is a graphic we made about uh, a survey Fairville Canada put out about 76% of Canadian respondents actually supporting proportional representation while our prime minister does not. And the second graphic was one we just did on the New Brunswick election where two out of five is not a majority. So that false majority government out there, uh, hopefully we, we tackled that with this graphic as well. Now there's a couple more people joining. Um, so hopefully in this graphic, you'll notice a few things. Uh, you've got the repetition in terms of the circle shape, in terms of the outside and the inside, uh, the contrast between uh, the elements and the background. You notice we put the frame behind there, that way the elements would be able to stand out on their own and not get lost right next to any of the, uh, the background. Uh, the repetition in terms of the icons, and then the space around them to be able to give them room to breathe and then identify them as part of the same element and, and part of the image. Hopefully you'll notice the negative space or white space around the image and then the different color in terms of the text in order to differentiate between what we're saying uh, and then hopefully put out the key parts of it out there. Uh, finally, you'll see that there is a visual hierarchy to things, the descending and trying to draw their attention. This, this is the main focal point, but this really like sets the tone about what it's describing and it goes all the way down to a bit of a question on both of them. And then what I've added, uh, what we've added at the bottom is more or less a call to action, a way to say like, all right, you've read our information, what do you do next? Uh, and so that for us is simply to end first past the post and to demand proportional representation. Next up is color schemes. Now, a color scheme is used to describe the overall selection of colors in an artwork. These color schemes utilize colors at certain locations on the color wheel. Now, I'm not going to go into each of these. The, the information about them right now is not, is not useful at this moment. You can definitely read more about that on your own. But I do want to show you a nifty tool that is available to everyone. So you should be seeing on your screen now a web page I've just brought in. Let's get it there. Uh, and what you'll see here is the color wheel. Uh, Canva has this great tool, uh, which you can use to try to figure out what colors you should use, and then what color schemes they really correlate well with. I'll provide these links to you after, so just don't worry about it for now. Just check these graphics out. 
Um, so what's important is you can choose your color using the color wheel here, or you can actually put the hex code in. Now with colors, there's RGB and then there's hex code. Uh, that's those are just two different ways of identifying what color you're using. Uh, if you only have the, the RGB of a color, what you can do is go search uh, online for an RGB to hex uh, uh, translator or um, uh, transition tool and you'll be able to get that color from that. Uh, you could also just put it in paint and use the little eyedropper and uh, that's pretty simple there when you when you find that. But once you have the hex code and you've chosen your color, so let's just choose this one, uh, you can go down your color combinations which is your color schemes. Uh, so you can choose complementary, monochromatic, analogous, tetradic, or tetradic uh, and this will give you different colors. So complementary is this one, Monochromatic is a very similar type of color. Analogous gives you these colors. Triadic and tetradic. Now what you can also do is copy these codes. So Canva tries to be very um, intuitive and encompassing. So you can actually copy these over and go straight to Canva when you're done, or you can actually create a graphic and I'll bring you straight there too. Uh, so when you do go back to this page, uh, just know that you can click these to copy. And uh, you can also learn more about the different colors and what they mean by skimming this afterwards. But more on that another time. Okay, going back to the presentation, we have topography. So uh, in essence, topography is the art of arranging letters and text in a way that makes the copy legible, clear, and visually appealing to the reader. Topography involves font style, appearance, and structure, and aims to elicit certain emotions and convey specific messages. In short, typography is what brings the text to life. There are three basic kinds of typeface, serif, sans serif, and decorative. Serif, you can see the little tails, sans serif, without serif, and decorative, and that comes in a whole bunch of different styles. Uh, to keep the interface uncluttered and streamlined, a good designer will never use more than three fonts and keep decorative fonts to a minimum. Most designers will pair serif fonts with sans serif fonts, such as putting main body text in a serif font and putting your title in a sans serif font uh, or vice versa. Myself, I've actually just been using sans serif for most of our designs. I find serif is good if you're using a, uh, a quote or if you really want to imbue a sort of writing or spoken aspect in terms of your graphic. Uh, and most of my graphics to date have been more of a bold, let's get the message out there. Letter spacing. So just very, very little touch on this. So letter spacing is also called tracking. And tracking is adjusting the space between letters throughout an entire word. And it's something you can do in Canva. There's also kerning, which is similar to tracking in that it determines the space between two letters or characters. However, tracking adjusts space equally throughout the whole word. Kerning only adjusts the space between two letters. Adjusting space between the letters enhances the visual flow of words and the words can be indecipherable when letters are set too close together and awkward when they're set too uh, far apart. So to give you a little bit more of a context of that, uh, Canva has more tools actually. So I'll paste these in afterwards as well for people to look at, uh, but there's actually a font style, uh, stare, a font pairing website that lets you look at what different fonts look like when they're paired together. I've been using Open Sans with Open Sans Extra Bold, and really what this is, is a great way to uh, grab the attention of your audience, much like that of a headline. Um, you can pair it with different fonts. This one just says Cooper Hewitt, but there's a whole bunch of different fonts you can explore there. And then if you're just looking for an easy fix, Canva's also got this great site where you can just click, look for any fun of font you would like to pair, just pick one and it will, oh, maybe on the next one. Uh, it will actually pair it for you. It will give you a font that'll work together. So that's just something to keep for uh, later or when you're doing your own graphics later on and you wanna figure out what font to use. Okay, so that I believe is everything that I'd like to introduce to you about uh, Canva before actually showing you the, uh, the interface. Um, so what you can do is if you've got two screens, you're more than welcome to follow along on your own Canva and your own screen and, and go with what I'm saying. Otherwise, what I would recommend is just simply watching as I take you through the tour of Canva. Um, you can write things down if you'd like, or you can always watch the video later, but ultimately this is just getting you comfortable with the design and interface of, uh, of Canva. 
Uh, I'm using my own account just because it's free, and that way you're seeing the exact same things that uh, I would be seeing on this. Uh, so introduce you straight to Canva. Uh, it's pretty awesome. There's a ton of different uh, helpful tips you can use up here. So just the heading, they have a ton of templates you can pick from social media, personal business marketing, and you can choose from Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, anything you can think of. Uh, there was different features that you can go through and there's even learning exercises. So after this, and I do recommend this, uh, once you're done this and you're learning more graphic design, just go on YouTube or check out any of Canvas courses and they'll take you through even more tips and tools. Uh, you can go through Canva here as you scroll down, you'll notice that they give you a ton of different choices to pick from about how to start, what you want to design. They show you your designs that you've been, you've been doing lately. And then here is where I think Canva's strength is, especially for people that have never done graphic design before. It gives you a ton of templates. So here you can see Instagram photos or Instagram posts, and you can have ones that have quotes. You can have ones that are like kind of a, an image or focusing on this. Uh, posters, you'll notice this from earlier. A presentation, so you can actually make PowerPoints on here uh, or PowerPoint slides. Uh, Facebook posts, logos, Instagram stories, and you'll notice these move. So there are animations you can do in Canva. There are videos. We'll go into that after. Uh, you can even do infographics. And you know, I think my first design on Canva was back in 2015, and I think it was an infographic. I did not understand how powerful it was at the time. So hopefully you all can make better use of this than I did at that time. And then if you're excited about the animations, they've got some really cool ones actually. Uh, and these go well with any messages you have, or even if you're actually here just on behalf of like your own brand or company and just wanting to, uh, to experiment with it. Um, these really catch your eye. Uh, so when it comes to social media, putting your images on there, uh, photos are so much better than text. I, I think the stat is like 50, 50 times, maybe 10,000 times faster in terms of, of visual, of visual um, uh, aspect. And then we have a phrase in PR called video is king. Uh, so videos always get more clicks and views. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, you always have these. So they take you back to the top. Uh, on your side here, you've got uh, another link for all your designs, designs that are shared with you, and then a couple other folders. Uh, here is where you can start. Uh, you just simply uh, look through, scroll through their, their list about things you can design, Facebook posts, Facebook cover. You'll also notice that dimensions are there. So the, the dimensions of your graphic, those are really important. They come in pixels and inches. And what that is, is that's, that's the certain dimension of how it'll appear uh, once you've downloaded your graphic. And it's really important to know that a Facebook post is different than an Instagram post, is di different than a Twitter post. You want your graphics to appear in those feeds meant for those feeds. So that means making them in the same dimension, in the, in the, the specific dimensions as, the, the, as what calls for that platform. Um, you'll notice there's different uh, um, dimensions here as you go along. So just experiment and go through. You can even type. So if I want Facebook, you'll see a whole bunch comes through. If I want Instagram, the same thing will happen. Uh, email headers, you name it, posters, uh, presentations, everything. And you can also do the same up here with create a design. You can even do custom information uh, dimensions really simply. Just simply type in your width and height if you're using pixels. You can change it to inches, millimeters, and centimeters. Okay, so why don't we start off by making a Instagram post. So after clicking Instagram, it opens up a new page for you in a new tab. Um, now, what's great about Instagram, or no, what's great about Canva, as I said earlier, is all the templates. So that's the first thing that comes up. They give you a ton of different options here, uh, especially if you've never used any of these before and you really just want to emulate something that's already worked. Uh, you can go through that. So you'll see they actually have a whole bunch for coronavirus at the moment. Uh, they've got newsroom Instagram posts, which I've actually found have been quite helpful. Uh, they're really great for putting out uh, messages using certain tones and colors. Uh, so that's been great. Uh, you can make animated Instagram posts. And uh, the list just keeps going off. If you scroll further down enough, they'll actually just give you all of them. Uh, so take the time uh, just, to, um, just, to, just to go through and make sure that uh, you're seeing what you'd like to put out there. Uh, so for us, let's go ahead and just keep it blank for now. Uh, so I'm going to take you through the other options here. Uh, so you've got your uploads tab which is all of the photos and images and everything you've uploaded to Canva. You can either upload media by clicking Upload Media, 
and then just putting that in from a file on your computer. Or you could actually copy an image and then just paste it into your Canva just like that. Uh, I'm just going to go and give the obligatory uh, hotkeys are the best keys kind of thing. So if you if you don't know hotkeys, Control C on a, on a, a Windows is to copy. Uh, Control V is to paste. Um, those are your really the big ones you need to know. There's Control Z, which is undo, and then Control Y, which is redo. Uh, I find those are very helpful. Um, so you find this image right here. This appeared because I pressed Control C and I copied it from a web page I was looking at. Uh, what you can do now is a few different things. So let's go ahead and actually try to do something with this image. So we click at it, and there's a couple options up here. There's the effects. You can change how your image looks, different color schemes, different hues, and that's just something you can look at after. There's filters, so let's control Z those. Oh, nope. Uh, so we've got the filters. You can change how your image looks uh, on your page um, by simply using the filters option. And that's just a whole bunch of different hues and tones. And it's almost like any, any sort of phone app, so it's really familiar. Most people know that. Uh, you can adjust your image, brightness, contrast, saturation, tint. So very much like uh, Paint or any other uh, image processing app you've been using. Uh, you can crop your image. Now, there's, there's, several, there's two ways to do this. So you can crop your image by clicking uh, Crop up top. Or, and then you just simply drag the corners down. You can go using these corners to the left, to the right. And all of a sudden, you've got a cropped version of your image. You can also double click on the image, and it does the exact same thing. I find the double click is a lot easier. Uh, I'm already on the screen, so double click is just very intuitive. You can also flip your image, flip horizontal, or you can flip it vertical. Makes it simple. Uh, now, if you have several images on the page, if you remember the, uh, the different version of the colorful garden ideas image I had behind it, you can change the position of the image on your page. Simply go click on position, and here you have an option to send it backwards or forwards, and you'll notice the other image is now on top of it. You can actually align your images. So if you want your images to be top of page, you can move it to there. Let me move this over there. Uh, you can also align it to the middle, the bottom, center, and the right. And then you can actually click two images. Now you click two images by holding down the shift button when you click them together so you can move them as one. Then simply do that again with position and you'll put them all depending on how you'd like to actually put them on your page. You can also group your images. So if you click group, they'll actually become one image and you can move them around like that. That's just really useful for if you're going to be moving uh, your image multiple times and you just don't want them to be separated. And then if you ever just want to ungroup them, it's simple, just click ungroup. Really easy from there. Okay, there's a couple other aspects too. Before we show you those, let's get rid of this. All right, let's go on to the next, which is photos. So what's great about Canva is that it's actually got a huge photo library. Um, can you make more than one group? Uh, yes, yes, you can actually, sorry. Let me, let me show you on this next one. So uh, what's great about Canva is that you can, uh, you can choose from a huge selection of photos that are all free. There are, I believe, some pro ones, but it'll usually tell you later on. Yep, see right here. Uh, if you go and hover on the photo, you'll see pro with the crown, and that's a paid image. If you hover on the photo, you'll see free. That's a free image. So those are great to click. So just click it. Actually, that's a boring one. Let's go with this one. All right. So if you click this, uh, you can move it around. You can do any of the effects I had on it previously uh, and do some really neat image editing using those, the filters and the effects. Um, the question we had in the chat was, can you group images? Uh, so I'm just going to show you uh, after this. Um, why don't we just bring this one on? So we've got this separate photo down here. Um, you know, I'll, I'll get to that one after. It's a little bit easier using shapes. Um, so going down from photos, uh, you can go to elements. 
Now, elements are great. This is what Canva, this is what makes Canva really uh, awesome and intuitive and actually uh, very useful because they've got a ton of different icons, shapes, graphs, everything you can imagine. So on Canva, they show you the recently used, uh, they show you featured, which is actually really neat and interesting. They've got a ton of really creative artwork that, uh, that's been submitted. So you can use a lot of those. Uh, then they have lines and shapes, shapes, all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, frames are neat. What frames do is they allow you to take an image and then put it into this shape. So while we're here, why don't we do that? So you can see that we have uh, the, the photo I've taken as well as the frame. I put the photo over the frame and voila, you've got an image uh, based on that shape you put the forward. Um, so that just makes it really easy. So what we'll do is we'll shrink this and put this off to the side. Go back to elements. So you can explore these afterwards as you go through. There's a ton of different shapes for you to use in the frames. There's also numbers and, uh, and graphs and everything there. Um, you've also have, uh, yes, it'll, it'll be recorded after, so don't worry, you'll be able to see all this after. Uh, sorry if I am going too fast. Um, this is just to get you uh, experimenting out on your own. I just wanna give you a, an overview of everything. Um, the other option uh, that is really neat is grids. Uh, this is great because you can actually place photos into this based on how many objects and shapes you're, you're, you're putting out there. So let's grab this one. And you've got that there. And let's grab this one and put that there. Now, if the part of the photo that you wanna showcase isn't actually appearing, just simply double click and you'll be able to move the aspect of the photo over into the shape that you'd like to show. Um, so it's that easy. Just give yourself a, a little bit of a trial as you go through it. Um, other elements that you can try are actually charts and grids. So before we start cluttering up this one page, why don't I show you how to make a separate page in the same document? So you've got a couple icons here. You've got notes, which you can add to your design. So if you're sharing it with other people, you've got duplicate page, which just copies this. And then you've got add a page, which gives you a new page. And the same option is down here at the bottom. So we add a new page, page two, and let's add a chart. So for this is for everyone that loves numbers and pie charts and graphs. You can actually create those straight in Canva. There is a uh, chart for you to enter the information into. Um, I'm not gonna do too much here. I just wanted to show you what is possible. Uh, so yeah, you can make charts. You can make, let's delete that. Uh, just so I can show you the different kinds. And if you like the pie charts, you can go ahead and create your own right here. So all of those can be used uh, in that together. Can text and image become a group? I believe so. Why don't we try that? So that's what we'll go to next. Uh, so you've got all these elements you can choose from. So just scroll through and try them out. Canva does give you a whole bunch that they've kind of collected together. Uh, the other one I really want to show you before we move on from there is this the gradients. Uh, this is really neat. There's a whole bunch of different shapes that you can use. Um, and all that really is, is just simply changing the colors and it'll give you a gradient between the two. So let's try this one. You can see there, and actually you don't need, you haven't seen this yet. So let's, let's tell you about this. So, uh, whenever you're putting a shape or a gradient in, you can change the color. So let's bring that up. So say I would like a boring square. So we've got a square right now. It shows up on the screen as the default color or what other color you're used last. Uh, you can click color and you've got a whole bunch here to use. It'll actually pick up on colors within photos in your document. So if you want to duplicate some of that and it'll give you the default ones. And then you can actually, this is where you would type your hex code. So if you remember at the beginning when I showed you the color wheel and those hex codes, that's where you're going to put it right here. So how you can choose any color you'd like and it'll change. And the same for here with the gradient. And there's a ton of different shapes and sizes you can experiment with. Uh, all right, going on from there, let's go to text and that way I'll be able to answer that question. Uh, the next option on the sidebar is text. 
Now, there is a ton of different open source fonts and topographies for you to use, um, but here's the kind of the, the 411. You've got uh, different sizes, so they've kind of put some defaults in, a heading, subheadings, and a little bits of text. There's also fonts they've made for you. This is the decorative that we were talking about. They capture some of the styles that you might want to use, and this really is uh, open to interpretation and depending on what you want to design. So anything you'd like, you can go scrolling through. Uh, but for us, let's just simply add a heading. So it pops up on your screen, and we'll go with proportional representation, because why not? Now you see it comes up as black. Now you can change that color just simply by going up here. So you'll notice when we type something, we've got another row up here of data. Uh, does Canvas free version ever run out? No, it is always free. <laughs> So that's what's great. Canva is always free. Uh, and honestly, like you can do pretty well almost everything you'd like to do with this version. Uh, Pay does come up with access to more icons and uh, resizing. Um, but if you're just using it personally, I, I would just recommend the free version. Uh, so going back to the heading, uh, you can change your, uh, your type, your, your font, just simply by going through here. And like I said, they've got a ton now here's where Pro would come in handy. They do have some uh, fonts that only Pro users can use, but honestly, like most of what you'll need is, is free there. Uh, you can change the size. You can also change the color. So I want it white. And you can change now the size of the text, either by changing the size up here, or you can use the box itself. So you'll notice that the box of text has a, um, as a little uh, icon, a little nod there, you can actually move. Uh, you can also move it sideways and shrink it this way. And then you can move the text by just dragging the box, by clicking it and holding down and dragging it in. Um, make sure that if you're trying to do a text within a shape, uh, just that you've got the right size, that way it captures everything. You can also make some text bold. Now the text I'm using right now is Open Sans Extra Bold, so it's not going to be allowed to bold it. But if you have a text that does, it shows up here. You can italicize it. Uh, you might have to Control A, another shortcut. Control A is a, is a great one. And that'll change to um, italics. You can center it. You can left align it. You can right align it and justify. Uh, you can also add, make it bullets. And by clicking it twice, makes it numbers. So you can really only switch between bullets and numbers with that one. And now there's a few other things you can do. Why don't we get rid of this? Actually, just, just to answer that first question there about grouping text and um, shapes, you absolutely can. All you do is go and highlight them both and go to group, and they become one. So you can move that around, no problem. So just to make this really simple, though, uh, actually, let me let me ask Michelle. Are there any questions in the chat that I should uh, I should uh, consider answering right now? One that I'm I think I know the answer to, but I, I should probably ask you. In the case of a poster, can you mm -hmm. embed an active hyperlink? I'm assuming if you're printing a poster, you wouldn't want an active hyperlink, but maybe for something else. Yes, that's actually something that I've actually just been looking into. Um, so with, with Canva, you can actually embed hyperlinks using Canva. There is an option just right, I believe it's here. See this, this icon? Link. If you click that, you can actually put a link in there, and anytime you're, that's clicked, it'll go. But saying that, here's, here's the drawback. You, you actually really, you're very limited in terms of how that would work, because on social media, on in real life anywhere, no one's going to be able to actually click that link. It's not going to be able to activate. What uh, those links are useful for is if you're making it into a PDF. Uh, so if you put it into a PDF and then send that to people, they'll be able to click on the image and that'll take them to the link you've put in there. Um, are there, do you know if there's any restrictions to images that you use? I'm assuming no. You sign up for Canva, they've paid for the images, there's no copyright issues? That's correct. So anything that Canva provides uh, that's free to use is free to use. You don't have to worry about putting it on your business page or anywhere like that. You're, 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 you're good to go. Um, the only thing that I now caution is that like, you can't just simply go to Google and copy an image and, and put that in. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's copyright issues. Uh, there is a free site that I will be providing afterwards, uh, pexels.com actually, and that's got a ton of different free images as well. 
Um, there's another question there. Uh, you can make, make more than one group. Yes, you can. Uh, I'll actually show you that in a, in a different image. And then how do you use a group? Uh, groups are just simply an easy way of dragging your items around the screen without having to click both of them at the same time. Uh, it also helps if you want to resize two images or two items at once rather than simply resizing them uh, by clicking them both or, or at separate times. Um, so going back to the text, you can see here that there's a couple other options. We've got effects. Now effects are really neat because they actually add a, a bit of a shadow or a lift to them. So if we click shadow, you can see now that the, uh, the text has a bit of a shadow in the background and you can actually change the direction, the offset, the bluer and everything else. There's a lift option lifts it off the page. I found that actually kind of helpful recently when I've been making safety posters. Uh, you can make the text hollow, which is neat. It goes for a really neat effect. Bit of a splice effect, and you can change the color on that one. So let's, let's do that. Um, and then, I really like these actually. These are, there's a glitch effect. So this is really difficult to see. I think that's just because the colors I've got right now. But how about this one? Nope, those, those aren't going to be great. But essentially what the glitch kind of looks is like a little bit of 3D or kind of thrown off and the, the neon kind of speaks for itself. Okay, so let's get rid of that. All right, uh, so what we'll do now, there's a few other options here, but honestly, I wouldn't worry about that. You've got music and videos. Canva does provide you with a few of those, and that's something you can look at on your own. Uh, but for this, this instance, we're actually just going to be using Canva just to make an image or a poster. Um, so what we can do now is I want to give you a bit of freedom and time to go around and experiment with Canva. So remember, you can look at the texts and go through and try to make, uh, make some of your own. So if we do this, we have to shrink that to make that make sense. So you can change up and experiment with those. Um, there's also, when you have an image, there's also this little cursor. You can bring it around like that. It helps so you don't have to always click it. Um, and then there's also the idea of uh, these other options up here. Uh, to show you that, let's take you through a shape. So I've just simply selected a rectangle. Uh, actually, let's, let's show you a design. So one thing I've found really useful using shapes is actually the translucency. Uh, on here, the tra oh, sorry, the transparency. So if you click transparency, you can actually make it see-through. And what I find that is incredibly helpful for is if you go to photos and say, let's click this. We have this on the screen. All right, so just a few things at once. You can see now the photo I've put on there is over top where it was. Uh, you can change the photo position depending where you want to put it. Uh, but here, I like doing the trans, uh, transparent box over photos because depending on your uh, color and shape, you can experiment. You can then put text over it and have uh, different messages. If this seems like a lot, don't worry about it. Like you'll be able to experiment yourself. This is just giving you an idea about what you can do with Canva. So you can go from here and you can actually put a message and that way you have your photo as well as the translucent message on top. Um, let's see, visual hierarchy, direct eyes. Uh, we'll direct you through some videos afterwards from that, but essentially all you really wanna do is just uh, try to experiment using Canva and then try to get the information on top. Um, so what I'd like you to do now is if you're signed into Canva, go ahead and experiment um, with the interface, just take some time to figure it out. We'll come back in about 10, 15 minutes. Um, there are a few things that I would like to share with you first. So let's do this. Where'd you go? So here. Sorry, Mark. Be yeah. Before you leave this, mm -hmm. uh, Meredith is wondering if you could show how to add a frame without the green and blue. Oh, I think it's green and blue before you put the photo on it. Yes, so why don't we bring that up here. Elements, frame, 
if this is what uh, Meredith is talking about, this is just simply the background image the frame provides. You do have to drag a photo into the frame and that'll change that. Okay, so going from here, why don't you go ahead and open up your own Canva and try to go through it and see what you can create. Now, what we do also have uh, is I've got a link and I'm just putting it in the chat. So this link should be able to take you to the designs that I showed you earlier about the Justin Trudeau one and the two, uh, two out of four or five is not a majority. Why I've given you this is just simply so you can see what we've built, deconstruct it, and maybe make your own out of it. That's completely up to you. Um, it's just a little bit of practice. But otherwise, if you're new to Canva, I would recommend just fooling around with the, the interface and the images and seeing what you can come up with. Uh, I'll be here for any questions. Just pop them in the chat box. Or if you're able to unmute yourself uh, one at a time would be helpful. Uh, Michelle, are there any questions there that I'm missing? Or? No, I think we got them all. There was some confusion over groups and what exactly they are. Um, I think I think it might just be the terminology. Like if you've got three or four th elements or things on an image and you want to be able to move or resize them all together ex instead of one at a time, you want to just stick them together and that's a group. Like you're sticking all four things together. That's exactly it. Uh, Gabrielle is looking for images of food that are not too fancy, too high end in Canva for a program for food insecurity. That's interesting. Um, okay, well, why don't we look at Pexels? Pexels, Pexels, Pexels. So Pexels is another free photo site. Uh, you might be able to find uh, some of those photos you're looking for here. Pexels.com, really easy. Search for, let's say, food. and you'll come up with a ton of different images that are free. Now, they might be a little too fancy um, in terms of your program there, but uh, for other users, they might fit. And uh, you'll get to a point where it then starts recommending uh, paid images. So don't worry about those, just simply stick with the free ones. Okay. So if you're on our document right now and you're looking at the, uh, hopefully you'll be trying your own photos and posters. Uh, but if you're looking at my screen right now, we do have the new Brunswick Collection 2020 graphic up. Uh, so what we did with this one was we really wanted to focus on our messaging. So what do we want to say and who do we want to say it to? So we've got our audience, New Brunswick, uh, New Brunswick. We've got uh, our, uh, our, our message to them about what it is we want them to pay attention to. So the elections, so New Brunswick election 2020. We've got our graphic of how the vote uh, actually turned out. So 40% for the PCs and 60% for everyone else. Uh, we then added some text here, which is our message about the aha moment. Um, I guess to explain that, the aha moment is just a, a, a phrase or something you can uh, communicate to someone that almost really triggers uh, an emotional reaction about like, oh, you're right. Um, so that for us is our phrase. Uh, a supporting sentence and then our call to action, again with the visual hierarchy. Uh, there's a couple questions, but I'll get to those in just a moment. With this graphic here, you'll see it's actually a group. So what I did was I grouped all of these icons together and right now we're gonna ungroup them. So if we press ungroup, you can actually see that they're separate icons that I've gone ahead and copied and changed the color for, of which you can change the color right up here. Let's go to the questions. Are frames only for photos or can you use them with icons? Uh, you can only use them with photos. Um, icons, you can change the size, but you, I don't believe you can put them into a frame. All right. A uh, couple other uh, comments about this one in particular, and even the one with the Justin Trudeau, the 76% the of support and proportional representation. Uh, 
I am a big fan of using the color white and yellow. Uh, white is just a really easy tone to grab people's attention. And then yellow, especially on a black background, uh, causes people to make a fast uh, decision. So yellow and black uh, really makes people come to your point quickly and um, under, understand it if, you're, if your communication is really down to the point. Um, and then also, if you have a background, you really want to choose something that works well with contrast, because if we chose, say, let's change the color and make it this color, well, that looks a little weird, a little sickly and almost. If we make it a pink, yeah, it's just not delivering the same punch. But something that allows a contrast, well, that changes the game. That makes your message get a little bit more attention in that regard. All right, I'm just gonna give you another couple minutes just to go around and then we're gonna wrap up here. Uh, I do wanna wrap up by showing you uh, a meme page, a, a way to actually meme, because I feel a lot of people are interested in putting out messages in terms of that. And actually memes are a fantastic way uh, to get your message out. One we, meme we made last week about Doug Ford's decision to uh, take away the freedom of mis municipalities to change and improve their voting system actually got 3.3 thousand upvotes on Reddit which means what is it, Michelle, is it 10 times the amount of people that see that or is that, so you know that that's about 30,000 people that saw that meme. Um, on Facebook, I believe it's got about 5,000 views. Uh, so you know, there's, there's a message in a way that you know, before people might have um, just not thought that it was the most effective way of messaging, but honestly they are. And uh, it's neat because at the time, uh, the meme we put out last week actually had more upvotes and comments on it than any of the news articles that were posted in those same subreddits or other Canadian subreddits. And actually I went on Twitter and Facebook and looked at the main players who were putting out our messages last week and actually had more interactions, engagements and comments than any of those did. Um, so we really should look at memeing. And I think that's where I'll pivot actually. Unless anybody have any questions about Canva before we, we pivot, I will be available after this. Like we're gonna, I'm gonna stay on probably till about 8.30 if anyone needs help. Um, but uh, any questions before we move on to there? All right, on to memeing. Okay, so memes are actually really interesting and cool because all they are are visual metaphors. They're, they're similes and metaphors. They're a way of, uh, of turning a phrase, of essentially connecting two or more ideas that otherwise would have been completely unconnectable. Uh, so we really do have to pivot from our understanding of language just being of something verbally and, and, and in, in the written form to something that's actually uh, really easy to see in a graphic. Almost think of hieroglyphs. Like that's really what emoticons are. These are, are really hieroglyphs for the new age. And uh, memes are just simply a new way of communicating uh, by simply using images. Um, so uh, you can type in Google uh, meme generator and it'll take you to a whole different bunch of them. But the one I use uh, the most is imgflip. So, imgflip.com slash meme generator. Actually, let's just put that in the chat. Um, so what this page is, is it'll take you to here and it'll show you a whole bunch of different memes. Uh, so the, the art of memeing, uh, what I have to say is that if you are not online and consuming these images, chances are you won't really get it right away. Like you might get it, but you might not. So. To, to make a meme, you kind of have to be in the river of the memes, like actually within, within social media and within the, the conversation. It doesn't mean you can't understand it. It just means that it won't come to you as quickly as maybe it does someone who's online all the time. Um, so here's the interface for the meme uh, in terms of how you make it, but I actually just want to take you through uh, a page of all the memes. It says all the memes, but uh, I'm sure it's not all of them. Um, but here you can scroll through and as you do, it takes you through a whole bunch. I wish actually this was more of a grid format. Um, no, it's just all the same one. Hmm. Let's do, let's search all memes maybe. Hmm, let's go. There we go. 
Okay, so there is a ton of different memes. There we go, Michelle, thank you. That's perfect, actually. Um, so yeah, so uh, when I'm trying to find a specific meme, I will just do uh, what Michelle has said and just simply try to punch it into Google. And sometimes I'll just write the description and hope it comes up. Um, but there's a ton of different memes out there and they all have different meanings. This one right here, I believe, Michelle, you might've made one uh, last week or a week before on this one, is this is simply taking that quick exit uh, this Uno, Uno one is more or less you write a decision on here or draw 25 and the person's drawing 25. So it's almost like they would rather draw 25 Uno cards than uh, do your decision. So a good one would be uh, proportional representation or draw 25 and that guy just draws 25 and that represents Justin Trudeau. Uh, we've actually made a meme recently about this, about proportional representation. And this meme right here is actually about somebody striving for something and then being held back. Uh, so maybe we'll, we'll get into a couple of these. Uh, so why don't we go and use one that's pretty distinguishable to most people, which is the Drake meme. Um, so I'm sure most, if not everyone, has seen this meme before. Uh, there's actually a more friendly version of the meme. It's, uh, it's a Star Trek one. Uh, but for right now, we'll just use the Drake meme. So if you would like, there's a couple of examples here. But you also have the ability to caption this meme. So you click that. And then all of a sudden, this interface pops up. Now you've got two text boxes, but you can also add more text and it depends on the meme, how you would like to actually add your text. So we're gonna click text one and we're going to say uh, first past the post. And now you can, if that is too large for you, you can actually resize it. Just use these squares, really simple. Then you can move it into the middle. And then here we go. And the next one we'll do proportional representation. And we'll resize that, just add a bit more white space. Again, graphic design techniques in your memes. Now, if you don't know what the Drake meme is, uh, all it is is just a two square, or I guess a four square, and if you include the text, but essentially what this meme is saying, like a little bit of like, oh no, disgust, first past the post, forget about that. And then Drake's like, hey, proportional representation, that's what's up, I like that. And so this meme is great when you want to use a contrast between something you dislike and something you like. And it's really that simple. And everybody, everybody on the internet kind of gets it. Uh, then what you want to do if you uh, want to generate it, you simply do generate meme. And there's a, there's a couple other options, but that might be, let's see if we click this. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try to sell you something. Don't worry about that. So we've got the generate meme and it comes up here. And what I like to do is just simply right click and save the image as and add it to my computer library. Uh, if you found you've made a mistake or typo or want to do another one, you can just go back to change settings and make another and you can change it right from there. Um, now, the different memes will have different text. Uh, you can change the text by simply going into this gear icon, uh, going to font and then changing it to one you'd like. Now, the Drake meme is, is interesting because it actually uses uh, Arial font when most memes actually use impact and uh, I think impact just harkens back to the beginning of when memes were being made rage faces if you know your internet history. Um, so uh, each meme will have its own specific font and the way to figure out what your font looks like is just by going to Google typing in that meme and you'll be able to see however how others have used it. So if you go Drake meme on Google you'll be able to see that it looks like that font. It does not look like that. That is not the right way to do a Drake meme. <laughs> um, I know that sounds strange, the right way to meme or not, but it's these small differences. Uh, again, it's a, another communications thing is attention to detail. And I know that it might seem a stretch that you apply it to meme, but honestly, that can be the difference between your meme going viral and your meme just hiding in the dark. Well, I mean, to add to that as well, you have to understand how the meme is used so that's why I meant, uh, that's what I meant by you take the name up there where it says Drake hotline bling. If, if you're unsure of this meme, just take that name and Google image search the name and you'll see how everyone else is using that meme to, so that you can understand what kind of text to put in there, how to use it. There we go. So unfortunately, just go to images and you'll be able to see a couple here. It might even be better if you just go examples. There you go. And you'll be able to see the best way to do it. And again, the less is less is better. 
um, just like with our posters and everything else, you want to get your, your messaging down to, uh, down to a few words or really a direct sentence. Uh, again, you don't want to just put a whole bunch of words on the page. Uh, so going back to the different templates, um, there's a whole bunch of different other ones. Uh, we could take you through some of these. Um, or I can actually, I can show you some of the memes we've created. So why don't I do that? Oh my gosh, that skeleton one is perfect. While we're waiting for first, or waiting for proportional representation. Have you not <laughs> seen my meme? Let oh me my see. God, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I actually made this one months ago, but yeah, you <laughs> you called that really well. Okay, can you see here? It's uh, should be just a file with a whole bunch of images. Sorry, Michelle, is that up on the screen? Awesome. So uh, here are a few we've cre I've created. Um, let's see here. Can everyone see the SpongeBob one? Let's see. Get the chat box. Okay, perfect. Uh, so this one is a SpongeBob one, and essentially all it was at the beginning was a blank square, SpongeBob, and then just tossing this uh, this paper in the fire. So I changed that with the 2015, the, the broken promise. And then what I did was once I generated the meme, I actually copied it as a photo and brought it into Canva, where I was then able to add the liberal icon in. So you can actually use Canva with your memes if you wanna be able to change them a little bit. Let's see what else we got. Uh, that's okay. It's all right. So here's another one. Uh, so conservatives, when they abandon the Trudeau, abandon electoral reform. Conservatives, when Trudeau buys the wrong donuts, if you remember that. Um, here's another one I thought was good. Doug Ford does a majority government, even though a majority of Ontarians didn't vote for him. Oh, sorry. We can't. We can't see what's coming up. We can only see the like the folder. Oh. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I wish it was a little bit easier. Let me see if I just do this. Is there a preview pane? Okay, can you see the preview? Yeah. Okay. Here's another one I made for America. So there's, there's uh, American progressives and they want to vote third party. Unfortunately, splitting the vote and electing a Republican is holding them back. Um, so this one did really well on, on Reddit as well. Uh, here's that skeleton one. Uh, Michelle, that one's for you. <laughs> yeah. Me waiting for anyone to pass electoral reform. <laughs> Just not going to happen. Actually, was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, stopping electoral reform, liberals, conservatives. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, there's more of a generic politicians one. Now, all of these memes, um, you should be able to get them right away. If you don't, don't worry about them. Uh, you just in, maybe inundate yourself with uh, with a couple of different formats. Um, but they're really easy to kind of understand. There's this one too, which don't worry about the writing I put in there. It, it really wasn't that good, but the format's really cool. I think it's called the big brain meme, uh, but essentially it's like, oh, there's not much going on here. Oh, there's something happening. Whoa, this is great. And then, wow, really big thinking here. So if you can find a meme that like goes from like, worst to best galaxy brain. Thank you. Um, so that one's a really great way of showcasing that. Um, let's go to new. Uh, here's one for the alternative vote. It's not a very pretty one. Um, so the alternative vote, we understand that if it's in a single member district, it's simply a majoritarian system. So a, a winner takes all. And all that really does is funnels your second preference votes to the centrist party, which happens to be liberals. I'm sorry if that seems a little partisan. Um, we've got, oh, that one doesn't make too much sense. Uh, this one's okay. Uh, so this meme is a Captain Planet meme. And essentially what you do is at the top, uh, if you remember Captain Planet, I'm sure you can hear their voices. Uh, you just simply put things that have to do with the thing you're talking about. Uh, so like with first past the post, false majority, strategic voting, wasted votes, policy reversal, and minority rule. First past the post. This one is not a meme, but it's a graphic I made a while ago in Canva. Um, so this one again uses the the contrast between the yellow and the white and the black. Uh, these images I got off uh, an icon website. 
um, for free. And then I simply put these logos in using Canva by shrinking them down. This is the meme we put out last week uh, with, uh, with um, Doug Ford, Imflip. Oh, Will, do you have a, did you make it a meme? Let's see. <laughs> That's awesome. Can everybody see that? Or, oh, maybe not. Might not be sharing the right screen. Um, but yeah, Will had a great one there. That's awesome. And so, so uh, what? Maybe on this note, what we'd like to do is we'd like to we'd like to share and and really uh, look and laugh at what you've created. So here is a Google Doc that I'm posting into the group chat. Uh, what I recommend is that if you've created something in Canva uh, or on a meme, you can paste it in here, and everyone can comment and and recommend or even say like, this is great. Let's let's share this on our social media. Um, you'll also find in that Google Doc are all the links that I've provided, uh, especially for the color wheel, the font combinations. There's the site for the free photos, uh, free icons and images, free vector images, and the site for the meme generator. Um, one thing I did not mention uh, was that uh, when you're creating an image in Canva, well, I, I did mention in the beginning was the dimensions, but the Facebook poster one, the one that is the specific vertical size that we've been using is a specific uh, size and that is 10, 1200 by 1500 and that's in the document too. Uh, oh, you need access to the Google Doc. I'm um, sorry, let me, oh, it's been a while. Let me change that. Um, Will has a question. Will, what do you got? Uh, just in general to, I guess, maybe both of you. Um, it, the, I'm, I'm glad to see that that little meme that I, I threw up there uh, is being received positively. If we wanted, if I wanted to use that, um, uh, w w would I have to clear it with Fair Vote Canada first? How would that work in terms well, of? Uh, how how do you intend on using it? Well, I could just post it like on my own and and maybe you know embellish it a bit with a bit more uh, like I'm just imagining going on Facebook and posting it to my 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 wall, my feed, and you know setting it to friends only can see it and and then just adding some sort of description of you know what this is all about and saying this is this is uh you know something that we should be pushing for oh, on the other yeah, hand if i, I mean, wanted to uh you know uh do it on behalf of fair vote canada is there a vetting process that it has to go through and how would that work so if like you're you're on the slack for fair vote toronto i know this doesn't apply for everybody on this call but if you, you like work with us and we'll decide what to post from the fair vote accounts um but if you're just posting it from your own accounts no do it do it we need as many people as possible posting about pr just get it on the like in the mainstream media awareness you know just just get it out there okay cool um maybe i'll just maybe throw it up on slack just to to get input it's like what else is this, is anything missing guys you know is this uh, say enough or too much not a, you know that sort of thing okay so why don't i um on that note why don't we wrap this up but still stay on uh, i'm going to share one last slide with everyone okay so you should be seeing there the final thoughts um, so, Will, you're absolutely right. Uh, we want you to share what you've created, uh, but if you share, if you create things and you just want to share them on your own page, feel free. That is completely up to you. Um, but if you're using them on behalf of Fairville Canada, especially if you're working with us in our Slack, uh, which you're all more than welcome to do if you'd like to volunteer with us in order to further the cause of proportional representation, simply contact us, uh, FVT volunteer. Well, let me, let me skip to this slide maybe. Can, can everybody see this one? All right, so yeah, if, if you'd like to volunteer with us, uh, we're up to doing lobbying, letter writing, social media, presentations, uh, newsletter, and graphic design. We meet every Monday at 7 p.m. over Zoom, and you can get the details on that by just simply uh, emailing us at fvttoronto, uh, sorry, fvt.volunteer at gmail.com. I've actually put that in the Google Doc, the contact us part, as well as a link to our letter writers drop-in, which is actually happening tomorrow. Uh, so John Bauman is going to be hosting that one and just going over some tools and tricks you can use when you're writing your letters to the editor. Um, so you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, as well as Fair Vote Canada, and you can find us on uh, Instagram and YouTube as well with Fair Vote Canada. Uh, if you'd like to learn more information about proportional representation, simply go to fvtoronto.ca. Let me see if I can paste that into the chat. Sorry, it disappeared for me there. 
There we go. Um, so you can go to that website or Vero Canada and you can learn more about proportional representation that way. Uh, but going back just to some final thoughts. So as you go through Canva, as you go through memeing, practice. Your first draft is never your best draft. This is all about uh, putting your pencil to the paper or just your cursor to the screen and making those designs and graphics and then, you know, sharing them. Um, my goodness, like if you should, if you could have seen my original Canva designs, you'd be like, what, what is this? Like, honestly, how you start is not how you're going to end. So make sure that you go ahead and put the time in and that you don't give up. Um, what I like to do is as I'm editing my, uh, my Canva designs, I actually just simply copy and make a new page. Uh, and then I just go through and change things. And then if I don't like it, I just delete it and go back to the original page. So some of my designs have 50, 50 pages, all of the same thing, just minor edits and details. And again, it, it really is that attention to detail that can change. Um, so number two, say what you mean. Uh, don't bury the lead is the phrase we have. Uh, you know, like if the, the most important thing you want to say, your key message, say it first and say it loud and, and really to the point. Don't, don't mince words, just simply say what you mean. Uh, know your audience. So are you making your poster for a specific audience? Are you trying to convince people who are opposing PR to like PR? Well, you should probably know what makes them tick. You know, what, why, why do they oppose PR? Are they attracted to certain things? Um, what, what can be, what, what's attractive to them? Uh, going from there, uh, brand with values. This is a phrase we have in the PR industry. Um, Oh, sorry, before you go, you're very welcome. Uh, and there is a workshop tomorrow. Sorry, I'm just replying to some comments here. Uh, there is a workshop tomorrow about how to write letters. That link is actually in the Google Doc. Um, but we, we will, Michelle, if you don't mind, do you mind putting that in the chat as well? Uh, perfect, the Zoom registration there. Um, uh, so yes, branded values is a phrase we have in the industry. Really what that means is that uh, if you're a company or, or an organization, don't sell them a product. You don't want to just simply be talking about your product all the time to your audience. You want to be talking about what your product might give the audience. Is it freedom? Is it protection? Is it fairness? Community, cooperation, diversity, equality. These are things that people will latch onto and that's what you really want to communicate in your messaging. And not just simply for products or ideas, but just for everything really, like really hammer it down. Uh, and if you're interested, there's a really great book called Don't Think of an Elephant by George Lakoff. He looks into framing and values and the mindsets between progressives and conservatives. And it's really interesting. So that's Don't Think of an Elephant by George Lakoff. Uh, Michelle, thank you for posting the letter writing drop-in link. It's in the chat and that's tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then the last thought, honestly, is don't be afraid to ask for help, whether that's from us here at Fairville Canada, myself or Michelle or anyone else, uh, or that's your, your, your peers or friends. Like at the end of the day, um, it, it'll take time for you to get the designs down and for it to come to a finished product. Uh, but again, don't be afraid to ask for help. So we're always here. You can contact. So let's go back to our memes. I think the most effective way is just to kind of take you through some of the memes that we've created. Um, so then that way you can kind of get the idea behind it and it'll hopefully jog you and inspire you. Let me pull up the chat just to make sure. Okay, so uh, this is the one I was saying that we did last week with Doug Ford. Uh, so this is Winnie the Pooh. It's a relatively recent meme. Like I would go probably about a year. I've, I think I've seen it around. Uh, it starts with saying, you know, uh, I love honey, but you know what I don't love. And then it gives you this freedom here to put your text in. And we just simply went straight to the point. One sentence, Doug Ford taking away the freedom of municipalities to change their voting systems. And then the four squares are very disappointed Winnie the Pooh. Uh, so like I said earlier, that got 3.3 thousand and tons of shares. So that's, that's a good one there. Um, let's see. Oh, this was another one I think people liked it. We posted a while ago. So again, it's very similar to the Captain Planet one. This one features uh, Power Rangers and the Teletubby. Um, so again, you, you list things that uh, are all something that's similar. So fairness, freedom, quality, trust, cooperation. And all of a sudden, this other person comes in with winner takes all. And you find it's the, the Teletubby and you're actually able to put first pass the post right there. Um, so that one just really simply signifies that, hey, this something does not belong. Something, something's right here. Um, this is another good meme, but let me, let me see if there's a, uh, I'll just take you through this. This isn't the best example of this meme, but essentially what you do is uh, you, you put two things that are not the same, but pretty well the same. And then you more or less say, uh, Pam Beasley from the office, they're the same picture. So it's good for linking two things that you wouldn't necessarily link. 
Uh, this one is squinty fry meme. I don't know if I've used it correctly, so don't go completely off this. But uh, so this one is just asking a question if democracy is majority rule, why is the majority ruling? Again, that's a key part of our first pass the post system. You know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure if, uh, if we've got other people still on the call who are not familiar with proportional representation or our voting systems, but if this is all new to you, honestly, this, it's, it's, it's really worth diving into. It's, uh, it's probably one of the biggest issues and, and the biggest barriers to actual change in our country. Um, so go look up proportional representation or, or better yet, go to Fair Vote Canada and uh, their website will take you through all of that. This is another one I made, like it's okay. It's um, how supporters of first past the post sound, first past the post is our master, first past the post decides who's worthy to be heard and whose voices will be silenced. Um, this is another one. Um, so this one goes on the fact that Homer in this image is showing uh, like he's perfect, like things are good, no problem. And then all of a sudden uh, you see from the back, there's a lot of problems. So this is good for showing something that uh, people think is good and then showing all the bad things behind it. Mm, this is one Michelle and I made about Justin Trudeau and taking away electoral reform. Do, 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 do. This is one some of you might recognize and remember. So this was one made a while ago for the one-time voting alliance. Um, so essentially this image is more or less a, harkens back to class struggle and capitalism, um, but we put it in regards of voting. So we've got the NDP and the Greens and they're fighting, you should vote for my party, not yours, something that happens way too often. Uh, and then I believe the meme is actually called Porky. Uh, so uh, it's a bit of a harken back to some old uh, artwork, uh, but then all of a sudden you've got, hey, let's, let's collaborate. One time Alliance for Democratic Reform and Porky is having a fit. So what we did was we made this meme in, uh, in the meme generator. And then what I did was I copied it over to Canva and this is where I added these icons. So what really attracts, what really like makes this a voting reform meme is identifying uh, the parties involved. So as the liberals and conservatives, whether you agree with us or not, are in the hands of capital and we're showcasing that in this photo. This is another one. Uh, so voting for Biden, so Trump doesn't win again. First past the post, America progressives. That's it, big smile, everyone is happy. And this one is just simply showing Smithers. There's a ton of Simpsons memes out there actually. Um, here's one, it's, I don't know if you'd be able to see it very well, but this one is, it's, it's showing, it's, it's a web comic. So um, the other part about memeing is it doesn't actually have to be, um, what we would consider a meme. You can actually do a web comics and, and there's actually quite a few that have become memes. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to remember the definition of a meme, but the term was coined by Richard Dawkins in, in, in the selfish meme, I believe it was called in his book. Um, but it's something I believe that is just reoccurring that sticks around. Um, so essentially we've got this, these images here. So the one I'm showing you is you've got this behemoth and we've labeled it false majorities and they're saying only one sort can defeat them and that's proportional representation. Um, here's another one I made a while back. Um, so this one is, it's a uh, cyanide and, and happiness comic that we just uh, edited the text for. Uh, so grant you three wishes. I wish Canada voted using proportional representation. Genie's on the side and, and says it's a great wish and decides just to give them all three wishes again. Uh, as I'm going through, does anyone have any questions? I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna scroll through the couple more of them. Um, Here's, uh, here's one I made a little while ago, and this is a combination of a webcomic uh, and Canva graphic. So what I did uh, was we took the comic itself, which was actually six panels, so you're not seeing them all. Uh, I kind of rearranged them and then added some text of our own um, and then put that in a Canva graphic. So that way we're communicating a image and a message. Um, yeah, so I like this. The a meme is sort of like an idea that acts as a virus. Also, oh, may may is it? Ah, I don't know. I like meme. <laughs> um, so yeah, so there are different ways of of showcasing. So this is a great way of com combining your Canva skills, which hopefully you'll be able to practice with, and your meme making skills. So there's a lot of really neat ways. J J K. <laughs> uh, nice. Sorry in the chat there. Um, let's see. This oh this one. So this one is called Philosoraptor. 
It's an older meme, so hopefully most of you have seen it, uh, but it's kind of like a pondering question. So if democracy is majority rule, why is the minority ruling? All right, that's all in that folder. Um, let's see. Uh, here's one. Uh, this is one of the, the, not the first memes, but the, the more recent ones too. Uh, so this meme is all about an iceberg. So essentially saying like, hey, things on the surface are look okay, but the things on the bottom are really what's dangerous. So that's a great one with first past the post. And again, if this is new to you, um, yep, there's a lot going on. It's a little bit more wordy. This is another one I did a while ago, and this was just me taking a comic. Uh, this was actually all about, uh, I can't remember the original comic, but it replaced that with Frank Ballots and First Past the Post. Here's another uh, meme I found really useful, and this meme is all about showcasing uh, the disparity in terms of attention. So you start with what you're talking about. The image shows this poor guy with no microphones and this woman with all the microphones. So that means everyone's paying attention to what she's saying. And we're saying here that 60% of Ontario that voted for other candidates and parties are silenced, while 40% of Ontario that voted for Doug Ford's conservatives get all the attention and all of the power. Here's another one with dominoes. So essentially you start with something. So this is, this is really, I think, the crux of our argument. I'll, I'll wait till the, the bar goes down, but the crux of our argument says we start proportional representation and the domino effect hits, and all of a sudden we have higher voter turnout, no more strategic voting, diverse views get a voice, increased cooperation and trust, and it ends false majorities and policy reversals. Uh, so again, as we go through all of these, um, what you can do is you can go ahead and go to the, the ImageFlip uh, website or any meme generator, kind of search for them. If you can't find the correct one, don't worry, just keep searching, it'll, it'll come up eventually, uh, and you'll be able to add your own text in. Um, it's really simple. Here's another one we did with the Trojan horse. So you've got Canada and the Trojan horse is the majority government. Really, it's actually minority rule. And you've got the, this poor schmuck bringing in first past the post, which, which, which is first past the post. Here's another one of my, my favorite ones. Actually, I really like this one. Um, so it's what, what's wrong with first past the post. And this is using a SpongeBob graphic. And I like to think that I organize them in a way that like the visual aspect of what SpongeBob is doing kind of complements what the text one is doing. So again, it's just really understanding what you're bringing in. Um, so yeah, and then uh, you can see that. Uh, that's all I've got from there. Okay, maybe I won't show you, I'll leave it with memes. Yeah, let's, uh, why don't we stop sharing at the moment? And we've got a bunch of people still on the call. Um, so I'm, I'm here for actually a while longer. So is there anything, uh, is there something somebody would find useful to go through right now at the moment? We can go through more memes, we can go through more Canva. What, um, what are people finding that they'd like to go through at the moment? Yeah, uh, hand there, yeah, perfect. Hi. Um, I was actually wondering about numbers. Like, would you have any good examples? And because numbers are really boring. Like, um, so I've been doing public health for a really long time. And just to make it more interesting, because it's like, you know, and, and you had a very honest reaction when you clicked on one of the images of hand washing. You're like, this is such a boring image. And I was glad that you, you said that because, yeah, we definitely need to make it more interesting. And now I'm actually thinking, I can't believe that I didn't think of this before. Is like memes and public health, right? Like, uh but like oh my goodness yeah but like how do i do it without making it boring and like getting some numbers in you know just uh, because infographics just nobody reads anymore to be very honest <laughs> so. it, it doesn't have the same punch yeah. anymore right it really doesn't. um okay so uh it's it's hard to it's hard to really just give you a great answer now at the moment because i'd, I'd have to think of the meme um but there, there if you're thinking of canva there are ways of showcasing your data in different ways um, I know with, with Fairvote Canada, we've been using the pie charts to really showcase the, 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 um, the, the numbers, but what we pivoted to, and maybe I'll just, I'll share my screen. Um, and I don't know if this will completely answer your question. It's, it's going to be difficult, I think, to, to really fully answer it. Um, but what we did was, where was, um, do, do, do. There we go. So yeah, what, what we did was we pivoted towards using the, um, uh, the people icons instead of, of the pie charts and that, that got a real good kick. Um, otherwise numbers can be quite difficult. 
Uh, in Canva, there are different ways of actually showcasing numbers. So if we go to elements and say we type in the number three, uh, you actually have a whole bunch of different ways of showcasing it. Um, I know this, this is probably isn't exactly what you were hoping for, um, but there are different ways of doing that. I mean, um, it's, but it's, it's sorry, but it, it is useful because like, you know, something like this would be good for like parents of young children, you know, things like there's a different audiences. So I have to tailor things based on who I'm targeting. Uh, exactly. If you're, if you're looking for the meme, um, I wouldn't say that it's the number that you really want to focus on. It would be like, how does that number make you feel? You know, like, you know, like, is there a disgust? Is there an right. anger? So right. that, that's really what you want to be able to trigger from people is that emotion. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, even if you want, we can, we can work on this uh, another time too, like uh, a little bit later, if you, if you post in the, the Google Doc there, um, even if you post your statistic, that, that's actually something I'm kind of interested in to actually seeing if we can make something of that. Um, because I, I think that's a really great way to, to take that idea. Um, but yeah, at, at the end of the day, you want to be able to trigger an emotion, I think so. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's, that's great. Thank you so much. No worries. Uh, let me open up the chat box. Ooh, disappears every time I share. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Michelle, for putting those in. Those are great. Uh, so Michelle has shared in the chat box our links to our social media. So Fairville Canada, Fair to Toronto, and uh, our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, Will, I think, has left, so thank you. Does anybody else have any questions or, or, or things they'd like to look at the moment? Okay. Um, why don't I, I think you can see my computer screen. So why don't we just go back to the meme page? Let's see if we can view all memes. And what I'll do is until, until I get a question, um, maybe I'll just do that. Uh, there we go. Until we get a question or Michelle prompts there, um, I'll just kind of take you through a couple of memes. So Will made one about Batman, and that's a great one. It's Batman and Robin, uh, more or less. Batman, Robin's going to say something stupid or juvenile, and Batman's going to say, what are you talking about? Uh, kind of a reaction. Um, SpongeBob, this one right here is meant to uh, communicate a, uh, how, how to say it? Um, it's like you're mocking the person. So it's usually, uh, letters are usually uh, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase. And it's a, it's a neat way of saying like, um, uh, of mocking what you're drawing the attention to. Uh, there's the expanding brain. I like the Bernie one. That one's a good one for saying like, I, I think Bernie in this one is saying, I, I, I'm once again asking for your support, but you can actually put whatever you'd like in there at the time. Um, this is the cat meme. That one's kind of gone a, a different in, a, uh, aside. There's a bit of a story, so we don't really, I think that meme's kind of fallen out of grace. Uh, the boardroom meeting suggestion one, I actually made a, a meme on that um, where I wish maybe I should bring it up. Let me see here. So what I'm showing you right now is a proportional representation Canada Facebook discussion group. If you're interested in proportional representation and actually aren't a part of this, I, I recommend looking this up. It's a great place to advocate for proportion. Yeah, Michelle, sorry, I'm just seeing that now. Michelle has, has pasted uh, the text for the confused SpongeBob meme. That's, that's actually great. Michelle, you should make that. Um, so where did all the photos go? So if we go to here, ba, 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 you can see a couple that we've gone in. Uh, Rial, if you're still on the line, I think you asked a question if we posted that one-time alliance meme and it, it's in the, in the proportional representation discussion group. I think it also got shared to the, your uh, one-time alliance Facebook page too. Um, there we go. All right, can everyone see this meme on the screen? So this was the, the, the boardroom meme. So essentially how this meme goes, and I changed it a bit because I pasted Justin Trudeau's face onto it. Uh, usually it starts off with a statement. So in this one, he's saying, I promised voters 2015 would be the last election under first past the post. They didn't want ranked ballots. What can we give them instead? Then what it has is two people uh, saying 
recommendations that are okay, but like they won't really change much. And then all of a sudden the slacker saying like, hey, what about this? And proportional representation is what we're advocating for. And it's kind of like, um, it's not that it's a snarky suggestion, but it's kind of the suggestion that the, the powers that be, JT doesn't really want to do. So then all of a sudden you switch to an angry JT, a smug guy who does not know what's happening and he's being thrown out the window. So that one did okay too. This is a graphic I made on Canva. So I pasted in the photo into the background. Here's the shape I used the translucency for, and then again made the lettering with the color white so that way it contrasts really well off the shape here. You've really got to try to <clears throat> experiment and see that your contrast and the shapes and the colors you're using really complement each other. And so that, that way uh, your message comes out clear. Do, do, do. Here's another meme. Uh, so this one is with uh, Lord of the Rings, Frodo. So then essentially the, the crux of the meme is you, you say something, uh, usually it's a conversation. A lot of these memes have popped up now where you have the person, colon, uh, their statement, another person, colon, and then you put the person again and it, the more or less the meme is what they're saying. Let's go back to the meme templates. So let's go ahead and make the Michelle's meme. So I clicked on the SpongeBob one. We're going to caption this text. Uh, let's, oh. Michelle, did you admit that person in the waiting room? Perfect, thank you. Um, so I've copied Michelle's text. And so the mocking SpongeBob meme, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into the text row one. Oh, no, that was not the text I copied. What, what goes in the bottom though? Um, that's a great question. Uh, so the thing is, is that uh, depending on your meme, you don't always have to fill in both boxes of text. Uh, and you can also go off on your own and, and make it just the one text. So actually, I think this would be fine with just the one box. Um, you can put it in, I wouldn't recommend putting it there. I recommend putting it up top, maybe shrinking it a little bit. So that way it gives it a little bit more breathing room. And there you go. So all of a sudden you've got SpongeBob mocking first pass. The post is so perfect. Um, now here, uh, there's a couple more options I wish I'd shown you earlier, but so um, this, this is the right meme is just simply this one, the SpongeBob without anything else. But all of a sudden, let me, let me see if I can find one. Here we go, this, this might work. So let's get rid of this. So this meme, the, uh, unfortunately the, the name didn't come up, but what this meme is used for is when something happens and then the person, which is the, the Muppet, is kind of like shifty eyes, like, oh, wow. Um, would you recommend splitting the text into two boxes? So the question, uh, one of the questions in the chat is would you recommend splitting the text into two boxes? Um, I, the only time I would recommend that is if it actually follows the meme template. And the only no way you would know if it follows the meme template is to look for examples. Um, so uh, sometimes it's really easy to split it into the two, uh, but ultimately it's got to mirror what people are already expecting from the meme because the more closely your meme corresponds to what people are used to, the more it'll kick in their brain and then really become more viral or, or just become a little bit more receptive. Um, so with this meme here, I've actually seen some great ones uh, uh, comparing the whole uh, Chilean uh, crisis, like there was the, the Chileans like uh, protesting against their government, the protests in the Arab Spring, and then all of a sudden it said CIA, and then the CIA has got a shifty look to it. Um, so here you can do, so let's say, let me, let me just, let's do that actually. So uh, protests in Chile. And so here this is centered it. I, I don't want it centered, so we go to the little gear. And here you can actually change where the text goes. So we're gonna go left. So all of a sudden you see it's to the left. You can change if there's a font shadow, you can add or get rid of it. So you can see the text became a little lighter. Uh, I believe this is the correct text for this, this one. Um, you can change the font size and you can change the vertical align, which I think just simply changes where it comes in, in that box there. Um, and then text to, well, let's go here to protest in Chile, CIA. 
So something like this. This isn't the perfect version of it, but this is kind of how it goes. And then you have the shifty eyes. Um, what I wanted to show you and why I came back to this is because some memes are just the picture and then some memes actually have space above them. And to add the space above them, you just simply go up here to spacing and you can click here, so no spacing. So th this one already has space, so it, it already is there because that's part of the photo, but for one that didn't have space, it would, it would disappear. Uh, and you can actually add more space to the top or you can add more space to the bottom or the top and bottom or no spacing at all. You can even change the color of the box and you can actually change the size. So you can extend it, make it larger, depending on what you want to share. But again, it all really depends on how your meme usually is. You want to get it as close as possible with just your message in there. Um, so at the moment, why don't we collectively brainstorm? Sorry, who had the, the question about the statistics? Sorry, what was your name? Safiye. Safiye, what was your, do you mind sharing with us the, the statistics question? Uh, sure, um, I was just um, wondering, like, the, I just had a general question, like, if, for example, because like I go through a lot of data and I just want to uh, give like an overview of like um, what the picture is and, you know, if, if keeping in keeping something like public health in mind and the current pandemic and and just to give an idea of, OK, like this is how well we're doing or this is what we could do different based on the data. So. Okay. Something like that. Hmm. That one, see, what I like to do, especially if I, if I was in your situation, what we're doing now is I like to go through all the meme templates and hope that something jogs my mind. Right. Um, so for me, like, uh, uh, maybe a creature of the internet is not the right phrase, but like I spend quite a bit of time online and I see tons of these memes. So understanding them is, is quite second nature. So I'm sure it is second nature for most people going through. Um, so hopefully as you, as you go through, you really find something that connects to what, what you want to say. Right. So if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, you're saying you want to draw attention to a number uh, in a positive way, is that? Yeah, exactly. In a positive way. Um, in the way that positive, in the way that like I want to encourage people to do something. So an example I could give you is like, you know, the one that we'll just use, right? With Batman and Robin. Mm -hmm. So I did think of doing that, but I was like, oh, no, that would kind of be a bit irresponsible because it might lead to stigmatization of people who are not following rules, which leads to another problem, right? Like you don't want people who actually have the disease to get stigmatized, which is another thing we've been battling. So it's like it's a bit of a balance. So I don't know, like if memes are the best for that, but I just that they're so quick um, and, and it's viral. Like it's so efficient. You know, I just feel like it's such a waste and I wish I could do something about that. So. You could, well, what, can you give us an example? Like what, what is a, like what's the disease? What's the number? Could you use expanding brain maybe? Mm, that, that one's a lot. Like that's the, that might not work very well. But yeah, what, what's, the, what's the number? I mean, um, I'm not sure. Like, okay, let's see if, if I can share it. Um, so say there's been an increase of uh, uh, people in a certain age group who are now, um, more likely to carry the virus uh, in terms of the, just their exposure and not following the rules sort of mm -hmm. a thing, um, social distancing and thing, but it's in a certain age group that wasn't there before. Um, so I just want to like kind of, I'd, like the number would be, I guess, the age group. Um, or would that be the number or would it be the number of people that like, which one should I focus on? The fact that it's, an, it's such an increase, the rate of change or the absolute number, like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with all these numbers. <laughs> so it also depends on who your audience is. So who, who do you want to know this fact? The people who are in that age group, for example. Okay. Um, so this is like, that's, that's actually, you're actually dealing with a very touchy subject. So I don't really know if a meme is the right way to go for yours. Honestly, you're, you're better off with just a very simple Canva graphic, just simply stating the fact. Um, and that might that might go from there. And you might want to use imagery that evokes the same uh, that 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 shows those people in a way like that age group, or whoever you're trying to to target, because then they know it's more about them. Especially yeah. if it's about people and that human connection. Uh, images with with faces uh, and nature actually go go make people stop on their their screens. Um, yeah, honestly, it, it, it might take us a little longer to figure out the meme for that one. You've, the that's Drake quite the one. difficult one. The Drake oh. one? The what Drake would you one, like to, you could uh, say something like, um, like, 
you know, not wearing your mask at a party and then like, right. yeah, wear the mask, you know? Yeah, I think that's a good idea because it's really simple and it's, yeah, inclusive as well. Nice. Or that that roll safe one that was on the other one where the guy's like touching his head. That oh, one's... yeah, that's right, that guy. <laughs> I like this guy. Let's see the um, the roll safe. Think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. This one's like usually like if uh, he's usually giving a smart remark about like, yeah. you can't be fired if you don't misbehave or something like right, that. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, could so, make, you could make a play on like introverts. You could say like, you can't get sick if you never go out. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that's nice, actually. Thanks, Michelle, because it's like not offensive either. It's <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, but again, like you, you, it sounds like you do have to be very careful. Like in many ways, like we're kind of just playing slapstick with a lot of our memes. We're just sharing personally. But I guess when you're doing it for a corporation or for such a touchy subject, you really do have to be very careful about what you're saying because you, exactly. you you really don't want people to misconstrue it, right? So yeah, because a lot of people don't get satire at all, like so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the problem when they take it literally. <laughs> like, it's like, oh no. What have I done? Um, oh, but- oh no. <laughs> um, let me let's go back to here. Um, I feel we're kind of we're kind of at a point where I think that I would just be kind of showing you things. And if you if you'd like, you're more than welcome to stick around. Um, but I think we're probably going to wrap up at nine at that time. So I'll just go through a couple more memes. We'll look out for the, the chat box here. Michelle, what do you think? How's that going there? But fine. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Um, here is another one we made. Uh, again, this was actually a combination of Canva and a meme as well. This this kettle came out, and originally it was a meme about defunding the police. And um, so essentially what this was was defund the police, and then there's all these cups all represented different departments where that money could go. Um, so I simply took the graphic uh, in Canva, put the logos of each party on, and then say proportional representation. Here's an example of the, uh, the smart guy. Uh, there's a question. So are infographics basically dead? Um, I don't know if they're dead, but the market's been so saturated for infographics that I think, I think that's all that people were seeing for a while. And I don't think their attention value has really, uh, is really what it used to be. Oh, thank you, Morella. That yeah, that was that was a fun one. Um, so I, I guess like another side comment, especially with with PR, and I think it's become a little bit more mainstream the term. But we are in what we are calling the attention economy, and essentially now uh, social media, your screens, everyone's vying for your attention. Um, so when you're using these graphics or memes, what you really want to do is make something that clicks right away and gets people's attention. You want them to focus and stop. Uh, I believe one of my profs said it's a real uh, thumb stopper, especially when you're scrolling on the screen. Uh, there's another phrase we use, and it's called controversy is the currency of public relations. And what that means, just simply if something is controversial or draws a lot of attention, that, that's, that's really what it does. It draws a lot of attention and you want more of that. Uh, but there is a fine line between doing something controversial on purpose and something just happening controversially by chance. Um, it might be a bit of a, uh, a personal opinion, but a lot, my, my, my personal opinion is, is that some of the mistakes you see companies do is actually on purpose um, because they're looking to draw attention to their brand and the negative attention uh, is actually outweighed by the amount of just attention they receive anyway. Here's another one that's kind of fun. Um, so this is the this is fine meme. Uh, there was some really great photos of actually the, 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 well, I shouldn't say great, but when the California fires were happening, there was a guy that actually went around dressed as this one. It became quite the viral success. But uh, essentially what this image conveys is this poor pup. It was a web comic previously, but this poor pup sitting in, uh, in its living room and voting, everything is on fire. So you put your statement up top and we say voting using first past the post. And then the pup says, this is fine. And it's very insincere because everything is not fine. <laughs> Um, 
there was a really great image, actually, uh, maybe I'll show you another time, but it was a picture of the same guy in his house without fire uh, for COVID. So it's like everything outside the house is on fire, but in his house, everything is fine. Um, I think we've reached the point where we run out of memes that, that I put there. Oh yeah, so he, remember when I said your first draft is not your best draft? So here's one I did a while ago. Oh my God, there's so much writing. Uh, yeah, it, but it still received a good response, but that might just be because the group I'm in. So he, here's the other kick is that know your audience, right? So I'm showing you a group of proportional representation supporters. So um, anything that mentions for PR, they're, they're on, they love it. And so like maybe this graphic was okay with, but it should have been a lot less writing, I'd say, and a little bit more a room to breathe. Like, look at my borders. There is there's no space. Like there's absolutely no space on this, on this graphic for it to breathe. And there's too much writing, there's too many caps. So this is an example of something not to do. Um, here is an image I made in Canva. Um, so this is an example of, of using different groups. Um, so I don't know if that person is still on. I never really got to your question about using multiple groups, um, but we actually made these check boxes uh, and collected them as one group. Uh, and then allowed them to exist within this within this icon and image as well. So there's actually three groups here. There's one group, one group. Oh, sorry, two groups. But then so one group here, one group there. Um, so I marked that. Uh, yeah. That was me who had asked. So I was just wondering, how does that look on Canva? Like, does it give group one, two, three, or like, can you name the groups? Or if you don't mind, like. So I don't think you can name the groups, um, but they're they're pretty easy to distinguish. Okay. So let's. Um, the one, actually, yeah, the one thing I never got into, and hopefully everyone found the Canva introduction um, helpful. I know there was a lot, so we kind of went through it fast there. Um, but let's let's just group a few things. So let's take some of, of Canva's uh, featured images. Okay, so I've got two up here. Now there are two separate images and icons. So all I do is drag the image, so it, drag the cursor so it captures both of them. Click group. So now I can move that around as one image and resize as one. Um, let's add a couple more. And then I'm going to do the same thing here as group. So now all it really does, all grouping does is just makes it really easy to move those images as one. Uh, you can have multiple groups on one page, but I don't believe there's any way of, there's no list that says group one, group two, group three. You're just gonna have to keep track of it there. Um, but there, the one thing to note is that like, if I wanna group all of these items, if I go ahead and do this, I actually can't. I can't group all of them at once because they're made up of separate groups. So what I have to do first is click ungroup wow. and that'll deselect all the items and then regroup those items. Nice. Right. And now I can make it into one. Okay. Yeah, so the, the grouping, I find it so useful, especially if I'm making those really intricate ones like the ones I showed you with the, the two out of five, There's I, it's just easy to keep all those together rather than, separating them out. Um, the one that you were showing with the two tick boxes in the um, uh, weighing scale, or I, if I recall correctly, like, so say the two tick ones are one group, like when mm -hmm. you move one, then it'll move like in accordance to the other, like, uh, like um, say I want to move one up, the other one will move around uh, up the same amount, or how, how does that work? So are, are you saying that those two icons are part of the same group? Yeah, so you know the one you showed with the weighing scale, yellow weighing scale with the two tick boxes? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, uh, tick boxes are uh, a group, right? Yes. And, uh, I want to move them, like, so will they, like, move in relation to each other always, or is that the point, main point of the group? Well, uh, yeah, so if, if two items are connected by being called a group, right. they will always move together. Okay, fine. Yeah. No, that, that, that's perfect. Um, Hey Mark, do you have any go-to Canva templates to show a basic workflow process? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, can you elaborate on that? I'm not really sure the basic workflow process. Um, is that like more of a chart? I Oh, how to wash your hands. Um, have I made one like that? Let me just take this off the screen for a sec.
So, hmm. I'm not following the public health theme. No, that's, that's a great theme. So why don't we go and make a flyer? Um, so with this one, if I'm, if I'm thinking correctly, you're talking more about boxes and about direction in terms of like, this is what you do next kind of thing. Um, and that just simply might mean uh, going ahead and, um, and, and placing that in that order. Uh, you've also got templates that Canva has prepared for you actually. They've actually got a ton of information about COVID. Um, so they kind of break it out like this. Um, so maybe if we do, let's just type in workflow. Hmm. This one doesn't show very well, but I, I believe what you're looking for is fairly easily done if you would just take the take the different shapes, the boxes, and kind of make it flow around. Hopefully that helps. Um, what were we going to show? Mm. Yeah, I think at this point, I would just be kind of showing you other graphics we've made. Oh yeah, I was going to, where did it go? Here we go. The one thing I wanted to show you on, on this graphic, the two out of five is not a majority, is actually what these icons are. So uh, I've got all of this grouped as one. So if we ungroup this now, and I'm just going to duplicate the page so I can, I can make changes on it. Um, so I've ungrouped this, and what this is is made up of several different, several different elements. You've got the white background, um, which is actually just a circle. Or sorry, it was, it was um, I believe, a cylinder. Uh, you can actually change the colors here. It becomes a little bit more apparent. Um, so we just change it to make the shape that we wanted to convey. And then if you double click, uh, you'll actually see that these icons are part of a larger image that I simply cropped. So all of a sudden, the large image is actually uh, a group of 10 if you, if you made it larger. And I simply just wanted to make it one so I could change the color on one. So the message I, I would really put out here, if we put a new page, is that uh, Canva has tons of different elements and icons but not all of them will be the ones that you want to use. And that in order to make them what you want to use, you can crop them so you can take different parts of it. Um, you, you're only really able to crop in a sort of vertical or horizontal form, like a rectangle. Um, so you're limited if you're using like kind of shapes like paintwood. Um, but for the most part, you can use uh, Canva to kind of crop things that way. This is one thing we never showed. I never showed the animations, but it's fairly easy for people to get the gist of that. Um, but essentially, yeah, there's tons of different animations Canva has uh, that you can then put on your screen um, and then really can change. And then just interrupt me anytime if you have any questions. Now, these are great for if you really want to draw attention to your posters, but again, do they really help your cause? Like, you know, like, what is the point of this? That might work on an Instagram poster just trying to get people's attention to, but it doesn't really do anything to really convey your message, right? So a lot of these are simply distractions. Although this one is kind of neat and cool and actually might be good for like, if we're saying like progress is slow. <laughs> Yeah, I think for the most part, if there's no questions, um, I think we'll probably wrap up. Um, like I said earlier, uh, we are here at uh, FVT. Let me, let me stop the screen and put our email in. So we are here uh, for anyone that would like help. Uh, just simply contact us. Like for, for me, I love graphic design. I love talking with new people and, and seeing how we can help that way. Um, so if you have any questions, absolutely. Uh, I'd, I'd love to see if we could figure out the, the numbers one. Actually, that would be interesting because numbers is actually something we deal with a lot. So if we can make it into something that works, that that actually be very helpful. So 
Okay. Uh, it's been a pleasure, everyone, but uh, I think that's it for tonight. Hopefully everyone learned something. Uh, if there are any final questions, ask away. Otherwise, have a good night, everyone.